say 91A requires us to have a quorum of the board in order to conduct our business, but through the governor's executive order, because we're in a state of emergency, we can conduct our, businesses, our business um, uh, virtually, I guess is the right way to say it. So we, we're doing ours on Zoom. There is a call-in number um, for individuals who wish to use it, who can access this meeting, and then um, uh, residents and, and the public can access uh, this meeting on video as well. So they can see us um, through, their, uh, through their system, but they are muted. Um, there will be public con comment available during this meeting, twice during this meeting. Um, we'll be asking for public comment um, so the public can participate fully um, in this conversation. When we get to the public comment portion, I will uh, explain how members of the public are able to um, um, show that they want to provide comments and then are able to. Um, and then uh, per 90, RSA 91A, um, we will also, we'll be following all the other guidelines of uh, New Hampshire's open meetings. So there'll be minutes after this, um, there'll be minutes conducted and put out A whole, a whole uh, screen full of smiling faces at me today, which is fantastic. So I'm going to. Um, so uh, with us tonight, we have all the board, the current board members of the Hopkinton School Board. Uh, so we have Andrea Folsom, Norm Goopel, Rob Nato, and Seth Aframe, and myself. Um, and then uh, it's it's wonderful to welcome back um, former school board members, uh, Liz Durant, Bill Chapin, and Matt Belanger. So uh, thank you for, for joining us for this conversation. Um, we are also joined by uh, James Newsom, who is the school district moderator, who's vice chair of the budget committee. Jean Lightfoot, uh, the supervisor of the checklist, and, uh, Introduce Ella when I introduce the school board members, but Ella is our uh, student rep on the um, school board and has been a very valuable addition to our meetings. Um, I think I got everybody. Um, so uh, I'm going to ask Steve if there's any deletions or additions um, to our meeting agenda tonight. Um, the agenda is fine as it stands. I'm not sure, Jim, if you want me to just to talk about the moment of silence now, or would you like to do that? later in the agenda. Silence, uh, as the, the Hopkinton community lost um, a longtime teacher here in the district, Ty Houston, and I was gonna ask mm -hmm. Steve um, to speak a little bit um, about Mr. Houston before uh, we did the moment of silence. So Steve. Thanks, Jim, I really appreciate it. I had the uh, privilege and honor of working with Ty as assistant principal and principal. Uh, he was one of the more uh, really very influential people, especially understanding um, the benefits of, of the middle school, the interdisciplinary, and uh, he and Larry did the immigrant unit, and I had a chance to sail. I was on the last ship. It was a simulation about immigrants from Ireland and uh, eating hardtack and all that, so it was a real honor and a real sadness for me today. I got a chance to catch up with Lish Cross and Sandra Burney and some other people who work with Ty today as well, so... Um, I just appreciate this moment of reflection on an extraordinary teacher. Thank you, Steve, um, for those words and um, for bringing this forward tonight. Um, so we're we're here tonight. Um, I think in a, in a special meeting of the of the board. This wasn't a, a scheduled meeting of of the, of the school board, but after a conversation um, earlier this week um, between myself, uh, Steve, Andrea, Jean Lightfoot, um, and James Newsom, I, I think we decided that calling a meeting together um, sooner than later was in everybody's best interest as we sort of discussed um, some concepts for um, having our district annual meeting on May 9th. Um, we felt a real urgency to, to stay with that date um, uh, for our budget purposes and for teacher contracts and to, um, and, um, and to keep us all moving forward. We felt the May 9th date was important. Um, and so we, we tried to work really hard to um, put a plan together or some concepts of a plan together anyway. Um, 
so we could we could hold that meeting that would um, meet the legal requirements that we have um, as a district, as well as um, ensure the the public and voters um, safety um, to conduct uh, the, the meeting so that everybody is safe. So um, I at this point I am going to um, turn well actually before I turn it over. Um, to James Newsom and maybe the board for some comments. Um, we do have our, our first round of public comment on the agenda. Um, and so if a member of the public under attendees, I'm gonna give a little bit of a, of a tutorial on how to, um, how to let us know that you um, want to provide public comments. So if you move your cursor down to the bottom of your screen, um, there should be a participant tab that you're able to click and then there should be a button that says raise hands. And if you hit that raise hand button, um, it, will, it will show up on my screen that um, you wish to have, wish to speak, and then I can um, unmute your, your line and that would give you the opportunity um, to ask a question or to make a comment. And so at this point, I would just ask if there's anybody on the line um, who wishes to provide comments to hit that, that raise your hand um, and then I will unmute your line. And so we have one. And so I would or, or where you're from, that would be great. So John, I should have just unmuted you or you can unmute yourself. Hello? Hello. Hey, John, how are you? Good. Good. I'll even put a picture up. <laughs> Perfect. I think. Did I, um, um, the way you have it set up with the attendees separate, I can't see who is um, there at the meeting, only, uh, only the one person speaking. Correct, so we, um, we changed from um, what was a normal Zoom format uh, to the Zoom webinar format, mostly because it's, it's easier for us as a board to conduct our business because um, we don't have everybody who may be participating if there were 60 people we would have 60 little boxes on the screen which is really challenging um, yeah. to conduct a board meeting so we have the webinar allows us to have the same flexibility that people can join us um, watch the conversation to participate without um, without having pretty much full access and being able to unmute themselves during the conversation right. so that's how we set it up um, but you would need to, people should know who's there at a meet, in attendance for your minutes or just for the public to know who's speaking or. Yeah, which um, is why. I'm, oh, having I'm, sorry, trouble, I'm, I'm having trouble dealing with that so that I can um, effectively cover the meeting. Excuse me. <coughs> I, I appreciate we're We're trying to follow uh, best practices as, as as much as we can. So um, that's the limitation that we have. Um, I see uh, Candy who has raised her hand. So I will unmute you, Candy. Way cool. <laughs> we can hear you, Candy. Oh, what's good. Your I'm glad you can't see me, although, you know, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm jumping the gun about having a question about what the real legal date that we need to do the requirements with some of the recent um, figures that we have been getting about COVID. And I, I'm speaking as a, as a citizen of Hopkinton, although I am a supervisor of the checklist. Um, I have a concern that we won't be sheltering in place as we have been and wonder how we will be able to do that. I'm sure you're thinking about that. I, I think it needs to keep people safe. Uh, there will be a lot of people who will want to vote um, and that will increase maybe the ability for viral load or at least exposure. So could you explain some of these things? Thank you. Thanks, Candy. So, um, and I think as we move into what's going to be the meat of our conversation um, and, and turn it over to James, I, we're going to lay out the plan, um, or at least lay out the, the first um, iteration and what sort of the best thinking that we have at the moment. 
Um, and I think, you know, health and safety of our voters is paramount in our minds as we're putting this together. And so um, what I would, I would ask Andy is, uh, after we go through and explain sort of our thinking and have a discussion and maybe hopefully reach consensus among um, the current board and former board members um, and others on how we proceed, hopefully that, that answers the question. But if not, we have a public comment at the end of the meeting after that discussion. And if you're still not satisfied, if you have other ideas for how we can improve um, what, what we're thinking of uh, for the district meeting, then we'd love to hear that um, from you. Um, so, because we want to improve our process as much as possible. So thank you. Um, I see no other hands. And so with that, um, I'm gonna actually ask the members of the Hopkinton School Board discussion um, and ask James to present. So um, I'm just looking at faces. I'm going to go uh, to the right of me on my screen. So I'm going to start with Norm. Um, sure. Um, most important thing for today is uh, to wish Janet a happy birthday. Yesterday was her birthday. So <laughs> happy birthday, Janet. It's not every day that you, you know, finish 60. Um, I hope you have a fantastic, healthy year. Um, yesterday you. was a you're very welcome, and I promise you in our first budget meeting, I will bring you something sweet of your choice. We'll be in, we'll be in touch, okay? Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I wanted to say um, yesterday was a great day. Um, the support from our students and from the, our faculty and just every citizen being out for Earth Day was just amazing. I couldn't believe how much garbage they collected. It's important to remember, you know, um, you know every day is Earth Day. You see garbage, pick it up. Just don't, just don't keep it there. Um, last thing is, great to see Liz and uh, Billy back here. I'm excited to hear their thoughts on this, and uh, um, I hope everyone's staying um, safe. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. Thanks, Norm. Uh, Rob, any comments? Um, no comments for tonight. I I do have some comments based on our last board meeting, but I'm going to hold off to those to our regularly scheduled meetings. Not really pertinent to this evening, so no, no comments for tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Andrea. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a ton to add uh, to what Norm said, though. I did enjoy seeing kids in their Hopkinton Hawk gear today for uh, School Spirit Day at Harold Martin. That was really. We wore our baseball caps indoors. It was great. <laughs> and Seth? Um, not too many comments. I do, do want to congratulate um, Rebecca Gagnon for her morning announcements every day at the high school, which I read. I think that she does a, a nice job of motivating the students, but also being real with them and, and being honest with them. Um, and it's important as I watch, you know, as each week we put under our belt with this, it, it, it's a struggle for everyone. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that for the students. So um, I, when I see the guidance counselors or the principals doing that, I think it's helpful. And I just want to call out that we, that, that everyone appreciates the, the honesty that the faculty is showing to the kids. Thank you. Um, and Ella, any comments tonight? I don't have any, but it's great to see everyone again. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thanks for joining us. Um, so with that, um, I'm gonna, I don't know, Steve, if you want to set up anything before I introduce James, I know we have on the you know, presentations and staff reports. Um, I don't know if you have anything special that you want to say. No, I think we turn it over to James is, is right on point. The work that you've been doing over the past weeks um, on thinking this through so we really appreciate it oh my pleasure um, <clears throat> I guess as we all know we um, postponed the school district meeting back in March which remains the uh, legal effective date of the meeting so whenever we do meet we satisfy the requirements that way um, but I'd, I guess I'd like to start off by maybe asking Steve to um, put him on the hot seat as to why we want to get this meeting done sooner rather than later in terms of staffing and health insurance type issues to, I think in that, um, I can't remember who asked the question, but I think that was one of the, the pre-meeting pre or pre-presentation questions 
as to why we really want to try to get something done um, in this less than optimal time. Sure, happy to. So uh, there's really two dates that are of significance regarding the statutory requirement to issue teacher contracts. So the New Hampshire RSA governs the issuance of teacher contracts typically by April 15th. And in my uh, 20, uh, this is my 21st year in Hopkinton, we have always met the April 15th deadline. And that's the first, oh, I lost everybody. Can you still see me? Yeah. Okay, I'll just keep going. Um, and so the, the statute says by April 15th, if you have a budget, if you don't have a budget um, by the second Friday in May, which I think is the 15th, so the ninth would allow a budget to be developed and then the board have an opportunity to vote for a slate. If we don't have a budget by the 15th, we still have to issue contracts. And without a budget, the board would have to hold back uh, contracts to employees under just under what they believe more probable than not, they will be able to fund through the budget process. And so employees who did not, would not get a contract um, they would still be with us and, and, and paid and covered for health insurance until June 30. If we rolled to the new fiscal, any teacher that we didn't offer a contract to would lose health insurance and we would be in that limbo without a budget. So developing a budget or having an approved budget allows finality and the board to issue contracts through the amount supported at the annual meeting. Um, there is a lot of um, anxiety and disquietness right now among staff not knowing uh, what the future is within this situation of no contract so having an annual meeting would allow the board to fund or issue contracts up to the amount of the budget approved so i think it's really a it would be a stress reducer some finality and, and allow us to start planning for next year i hope that makes sense i think so steve so thank you very much for that that outline of that um, now, with that in mind, trying to move forward on the ninth, uh, my goal, of course, safety is paramount, um, as well as to try to come up with a legal solution to this. Um, unfortunately, the Attorney General's office is not providing any guidance um, as to how to hold these non-typical traditional town meetings. Uh, so it's really kind of up to us to create something that works for us. Um, and so far, the only model I've seen out there other than kind of what I've been thinking about, and it's very similar, is what Bo is doing. Uh, they had their first, they're doing kind of a three-part meeting of an initial presentation, followed by online questioning, and then answering those questions in the second part. And then the third part is the drive-through voting. Um, certainly not ideal by any stretch um, and I think we can tweak it a little bit to make it better for for Hopkinton and to provide more ability to um, fit what we typically see in a meeting and that's kind of another aspect of what I tr like to try to do is to make this look as much like a normal meeting as we possibly can under so the circumstances which make it look nothing like a typical meeting. Um, so the process that I kind of see happening at this point, and this is just a, an initial um, sort of proposal, it's not, I don't even think it qualifies as a proposal at this point, um, is that I, as moderator, I would draft up some rules, a potential paper ballot, um, and then present those next week to the school board for another round of discussions. Um, and then May 6th or May 5th or 6th, I guess, depending on what the school board would wanna do, um, to have a meeting where I then present uh, the rule, the formal rules that I am proposing, um, as well as, um, sort of opening comments, and then go through the, the uh, warrant. Uh, so for that, I would ask under warrant article one, hearing from boards committees, that the budget committee present their information that they'd like to present. Moving on to article two, 
uh, for SB2, I would ask that the representative from the petitioners group present um, their information as well, as then we continue through all of the articles uh, like we would normally do, but instead of having a vote after each one, we would just move on to the next article. Um, following that meeting, um, we would then provide a day, day and a half for uh, the voters to provide either comments, either via email or voicemail. Um, at what, and then I will go through each of those. Um, I would accept motions to amend. Um, hopefully there'll be some consensus as to what those would look like. So they're not 18 different numbers um, all over the place. Um, all of those, my vision would be all of those comments would be included in the town minute town meeting minutes as an addendum uh, so that there is a maintained public record of each and every one of those uh, to build transparency as well. Uh, following that um, meeting and the comments, uh, I as moderator would provide a summary in another in the second online school board meeting on this matter, um, as well as proposing amendments. Um, Right now, I am foreseeing only motions to amend being made on the budget, uh, which is fairly typical from the last few years of, me of meetings. Uh, the, of course, the contracts and the SB2 are not allowed to be amended by statute. Um, and so I would then be able to sort of propose a couple of different levels of amendments. Typically, I think in years uh, recently, we've gone through two or three different motions to amend the budget is typical before calling the question. Um, and I would base those numbers off of the comments received. Um, again, it's not ideal, but unfortunately, I think it's kind of the best we can do. Um, at that meeting, uh, I'd also then propose or pose the questions to the school board uh, that come in and they can answer those. Following that meeting, uh, I would suggest that then it's open to the public for additional comments and answering from the school board based on sort of what they've heard so far. Um, I would not be interested, I would not like to take motions to amend at that time just because of sort of time restraints um, moving forward on the paper ballot, um, printing and preparing everything at that point. Um, then on Saturday, May 9th, I would uh, convene the meeting for drive-through voting. Uh, right now, um, I am thinking of two entrances, uh, the Kearsarge and Park Avenue entrances at the high school, high school and split that alphabetically so there'd be two lines uh, to minimize the wait time to get people through as fast as possible. Uh, cars would pull up to uh, the table of the check vote of the supervisors um, and then state their name, check in, receive a ballot, pull forward so the next person can check in, they can mark their ballot and um, pull forward and, and drop their ballot in the, in the box and drive away and be happy that they voted. Um, after, and I'm thinking right now, nine to one as voting. Uh, which would more than satisfy the one hour voting requirement for SB2. Um, and uh, I would also uh, create the ballot in a way that would satisfy uh, the written, the uh, request for a written yes, no ballot uh, that we typically receive on the budget, certainly, and on other articles as well. That's the signed by five voters present at the meeting. Um, I would make a ballot that would satisfy that requirement as well. Um, following the count, I would also conduct a automatic recount on everything as if the, because there is a statutory provision saying if seven voters request a recount to do that, I would automatically do that as if that were requested to satisfy that legal requirement as well. Um, and then, um, on the uh, one other thing on the paper ballot, uh, the very first question, uh, similar to Bo, would be, do you approve these 
rules and procedures. If that vote comes out as no in the majority, we're done. Um, the, the rest of the votes aren't gonna count. And I make that announcement and recess the meeting to a time place certain. Um, and we get around the, the another Zoom meeting like this and try to come up with a set of rules that will be approved. Um, if they are approved, then it's the rules procedures of the meeting and we can move forward and count the votes. Um, for the articles without motions to amend, it's fairly straightforward, majority up, down, move forward, just like we would in a meeting. The motions to amend will be a little trickier uh, because we won't have that iterative process of knowing if the motion passes or not prior to what we do next. Um, currently, I envision um, the motion to amend on the paper ballot being along the lines of, do you, are you in favor or do you approve the motion to amend um, the operating budget 2X, a decrease of Y, and do you approve um, that budget? Um, I'm combining them into one uh, just because I don't think anybody would vote to amend, to approve the amendment and then not approve the number. Uh, so I think it's a lot cleaner to do that in one vote. Um, I would start with the biggest, uh, amend, the biggest dollar difference amendment. Uh, again, I'm only anticipating reductions I don't think anyone out there is going to uh, move to increase the budget. Um, so we'll start with sort of if there's say a 500,000 deduction, we'll start with that first. If there's a 300,000, that would be second. A 100 would be third, for example. I don't know where the numbers will, will come out yet. Um, and so again, if the motion, if the first one at 500 passes and is approved, we have a budget, great, we move on. If it fails, only then will the second amendment be considered, that smaller reduction. Um, again, in one, in one question to amend and approve. If that is passes, great, we have an amendment. If it doesn't, we either move on to a third amendment or uh, sort of I would call the question like in a normal meeting and we would vote on the proposed budget. Um, if that passes, that would be the sort of the last vote on that, on article three would be, if nothing else passes, then it would be the proposed article. And if that fails, we do not have a budget and we would uh, recess to a time, place, date certain for that article only. Uh, all other articles then get their thumbs up, thumbs down um, and would be decided um, on May 9th. Uh, only, it would only come back, it, the only reason we would come back to another time is if the rules and procedures are not accepted or no budget passes. Um, and I'm sure there's some other issues that will come up um, through the process. Um, oh, and then I guess the last question I would add um, I'd add in after article 12, I would add an additional question of, are you in favor of restricting reconsideration on all articles other than a failed budget? Uh, we can't, we don't want to restrict a failed budget because we have to come back and, and solve that problem. But I would like to try to do like we do in a normal meeting. Uh, somebody's going to move to restrict reconsideration, uh, which will make it a lot cleaner and, and solve the, and make it easier to walk away from from the vote without uh, risk of something blowing up at the end of the day. Um, so with that, I guess I would pass it back to Jim. If uh, folks have questions, concerns, ideas, I am all for it. Um, I by no means am a, a, the expert on this procedure and policy uh, or what to do. So uh, like I said, the AG's office is not providing any guidance. Um, up or down or any opinions up or down on whether this will work. Uh, and it seems like the governor is not going to be issuing an executive order uh, that will allow sort of a get out of jail free card um, that will allow continued spending uh, the way sort of the town 
uh, is able to under its statutory regime. Thanks, James. Um, my gut tells me there's there's probably going to be a bunch of questions and comments and clarification. Unless so I went through that too quickly, I don't know. So don't don't go anywhere. Um, I, so what I would ask, and, and Rob's already beat me to it, um, is if for those of us here, um, if you have questions, it's easier. And we've been we've been running their meetings. Um, if if you if you have a question or you want to comment, um, click the raise your hand button at the bottom. That way, there's an order to it, and we not all start talking over each other, which has been um, a challenge sometimes. So we'll, we'll try it out. And I see Rob has has raised his hand. So we'll um, Rob, go ahead. Thank you. Um, James, um, so the paper ballot part, I understand that all makes sense in terms of those warrants that are up and down. Mm -hmm. How the process of going through amending an article and how we would vote on that uh, are you foreseeing that happening on that Saturday? Are you foreseeing that happening prior? Um, that, that's the part that I'm, I'm very, very foggy on at this point. Admittedly, that is the most difficult part of this whole process. Um, the way I'll, I'll start off by saying the way Bo is handling it is that following the in between the two, the two initial school board meetings and the public comments there, the school board is going to be proposing amend and basically putting forth new amended articles. And Steve, as a resident of Bo, correct me if you understand things differently here. Um, but it's sort of in the school board's hands and they're still going to put forth one number. Um, having read those that and that's trying to understand that I am not a big fan of that. Um, I think that takes too much out of the hands of the voters. Um, and it may work in Bow where there's, from what I've heard, there's less controversy in the numbers and less sort of community um, angst over certain numbers. So I think it may work for them better than it would for us. Uh, the way I see it happening is that again, taking those comments, which would include motions to amend uh, between those two periods, is as I go through those, I would kind of sort them and try to get into sort of numbers and pockets and um, try to come up with two or three uh, different numbers and propose those and include them on the ballot. Um, I would not be making these numbers up out of whole cloth. I don't like the, ob the leaving this much, much power in my hands, quite frankly. Uh, but I also don't see an ability to have 18 different motions on a, on a ballot. Um, but if there are some that are going to be close enough, hopefully the voters will understand the situation we're facing and understand that a motion to amend by 225,000 is still really close to a motion to amend by 250,000, for example. And that whichever one kind of makes more sense relative to other motions hopefully they would be okay with that. I guess if you were to do that and you had to vote on the motion to amend, I'm just imagining this line of cars coming back around to vote again, is that? No, I would have it all on one, all on one ballot. Uh, yeah. So it's kind, it would, it would, so for example, if there's two motions to amend that it would be put forward, um, there would be under article three, there'd be three lines of voting. The first one would be motion to amend and approve an amendment, an amended budget in say a decrease of 500,000. If that passes, then we have a budget all set. And then it's kind of contingent voting after that. Um, again, it's not a way I like to do things. I'd much rather be able to bring people back through multiple times, but that's I think not a viable solution for safety and efficiency of a meeting. Uh, so then the second line would be only viewed, I would only look at the second line if that first one failed. And that would be a similar saying, motion to amend, decrease by 250 and approve the new amended budget. If that, again, if that passes, we have a budget, great. I ignore everything below that on article three. And only once we run out of amendments, the last line would be, do you approve the article uh, or the budget as proposed? Um, and if that passes, great, we have it. If not, 
um, that's when we come back. Uh, so it, it is, the challenge in this is, as I've already just learned right now, is how to communicate this to create that comfort level in the system. Um, my counting the ballots is the easy part, uh, but it really is kind of getting, figuring out a way that people will understand and not just say, oh, I'm voting yes on one on the first big amendment and leaving the rest blank. That's a big fear of mine. Um, and that's what, if that happens a lot, that shows that I failed in my job of explaining it. Um, I don't know if at that point folks would be comfortable with me saying, hey, if there's a big problem here, I'm going to call it out, raise my hand and say, hey, this is a problem. I'm not accepting these under these circumstances um, because I see some irregularities. I think um, it would probably be important to um, get a sample of the ballot out to folks before Saturday. So they have indeed, yeah, my plan would be to get it out at least on the day before if not sooner. Um, probably at that first meeting, I could have a form of budget or a form of ballot ready to go. The thing that wouldn't be included would be the uh, potential amendment numbers, the dollar figures in there. That would be what would be missing, but uh, I would certainly be able to have uh, something for that. I would probably even, I'd, I'd easily be able to get something for um, this group's next meeting on next Thursday, correct Jim? Correct. That's right. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll be able to have uh, draft ballot and draft rules uh, ready at that point, uh, which I, I'll even be happy to send to Jim for circulation before the meeting uh, so that people have time to review and aren't just coming in cold. Right. Um, thank you. So we're going to, uh, Billy, you had your hand up. Uh, can you guys hear me? Sure can. Um, yeah, I think same concerns that, that Rob had brought up, James. I, I'm nervous uh, a little bit about how you're going to determine, you know, a number based on comments. I, th I think if somebody has, you know, they propose a number, they usually talk about why. They propose a number and then they have an explanation of why. And, I, and the way you're sort of describing it is, you know, there might be some proposals to reduce the number but nothing specific and then therefore you're sort of going to determine you know what that's going to be uh it's just a very it's a very tricky situation um so and i, I don't know I, I don't know what the answer is on that but um it, it's tricky now just another thought um you know the budget can we we deliberate over this budget for you know for basically a month and a half, uh, maybe even more, two months. Uh, you know, we had an elected budget committee uh, approve the current budget that we have seven to three. Would it not make sense to have the first ballot be probably the most, um, you know, the, the, the most likely uh, operating budget to pass, which is which is the one that's existing? I, I'm, I'm confused at why you would want to start with the most major cut uh, on, on a budget and then work your way backwards? Um, I would say first and foremost, that that's typically what happens in our meetings. Um, that the first amendment, the first motion to amend in my experience, um, and certainly there's a lot more people with a lot more experience and, and maybe my memory is off on this one, um, but except for one year, with a, there, where the first motion to amend was a small number. Um, and I actually believe that that year it was a small number to increase. Um, otherwise, it's been a large number decrease, um, has been the history of the first um, motion to amend. Uh, quite often, it comes in the form of essentially a 0% increase or a 0% with a factor such as um, zero plus the required bond payment uh, for something like that this year. Um, and then once a big number fails, then the groups who wanted to see a lower tax um, and a smaller budget will then decrease to try to get something um, closer to the, pro under the proposal, but still under, um, kind of like a negotiated settlement as you bargain for a new car. Um, you don't just deny the 
the asking price to walk away. You start with your best, lowest number and work your way towards um, a solution. And I think that by starting with simply the proposed budget, if that were to pass, I think that that would upset a lot of people in town uh, who will feel that their voices weren't heard and will increase the likelihood of a legal challenge to the meeting, uh, which will not help anybody in the long run. They will feel well, I, so. I mean, I, I would just. Billy, I think you muted yourself. Okay. There you go. We can hear you. Nope. There we go. You're unmuted. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't entirely agree with that. Um, I think there was ample times to speak to this budget, um, particularly when the budget committee um, presented the budget to the town. And, and we, as an organization, has been as transparent with all the meetings that we had. Um, and if anyone feels as though, you know, they, they weren't represented or their voice wasn't heard on this particular budget, I think they just need to look in a mirror. Um, I, I think we've been very clear week in and week out about how we did come to the number that we did. It, it is a professional number. It is a number that we, you know, that we went back and forth each time with um, to try to find some consensus. So. I, I guess it's, you know, there's no solving it. It's just a difference of opinion. But uh, I think you're, you know, you're potentially um, not giving enough credit to, a, you know, to a budget committee and to a uh, school board that work diligently to try to find, to negotiate ahead of time to present a very professional budget. That's just my opinion. I, I know, you know, it could go either way. But, um, but anyways, uh, I, I can come off the line at, uh, at this point. Thanks. Thanks, Billy. Uh, Norm. Uh, James, thanks for uh, wrapping your head around this and spending quite a bit of time on it. I know it's a lot of work and I appreciate you coming here. Um, one of the things that struck out the most at me, and, and you may have to remind me how this works, is the rules. You said to me, if the rules are not agreed to, it's game over. At what point of this process, can you, I'm just, when is that agreed upon? Uh, that would be the, that would be the first question on the paper ballot. Um, unfortunately, I'd like to be able to figure out a way to get um, uh, approval before then, but I just don't see a way where that can happen. Um, well, the reason, the reason I think I'm, I'm talking out loud is because we don't want to go through this whole work of trying to figure out a way to work with this. And then all of a sudden we spend three meetings and then the town doesn't agree on it. And to me, it's a concern, you know, it's like agreeing on something and then we're, we're stuck. We're back to square one. Um, so that's a concern that I would, I, if you could at all maybe think of some, some way outside the box that we could have that before that day, if it's legal, um, I think that's something to think about because that's a big concern for me. Um, my other question is there would be no time limit, correct? Because of all the cars coming in and out, usually ballots are open for like an hour. It'd be to clear well, on the bond on, on the SB2 it would be an hour, but there'd be no time limit. Uh, I would propose that ballots would be open from nine to one. Okay. Uh, which I would think would still give us plenty of time to get people through. Um, okay. being on a Saturday, it's not the same as regular elections on Tuesdays where we need before and after work kind of time frame. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think we, I think a four hour period would be, would be plenty. And again, if, anybody, okay. and, and if anybody is in line at one o'clock, uh, they would certainly get to vote. And if and folks are still folks rolling, rolling in, in, in droves at this point, they would make the decision to not stop at that point. That point. The one would be the one would be closure. Okay, um, my my last my last question for you is: How do you plan again? The just, just one one more thing on that. That would also depend on uh, the supervisor of the checklist's willingness to stick around and, and let people and help out to get people checked in. Yeah, that's true. 
Oh, sorry, go, oh, sorry. Ahead. go ahead. No, my headset was acting up. Can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And uh, to be clear, people have to be in the car in order to vote and all that. You just can't say I'm voting for my husband and, and all that. It won't have to be present for the checklist, of course. Correct. Yes, the, the check-in would be the same as always, uh, okay. showing up and, yep. Okay. And my last question is, is um, what's your... What is going to be the best way to get this word out to 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 our residents? You know, I want a, a good turnout. I want everyone to know it's it's happening. Uh, what is your strategy to get? The, I know, not everyone is uh, social media savvy, unfortunately. Um, what is the best way? Mass mail in. What is the best way? And thank you so much. Uh, for that, um, in past years, I've never really been concerned with getting people to show up. That's always been the job of the select board or the uh, school board, I believe. Um, so I would say Jim and Steve, I don't know if you have ideas on that or could comment. Yeah. You know, Steve had, had mentioned, um, and I don't want to speak for, for Steve, but he, he had mentioned that the, the, the possibility of doing like a, an every door mailing, um, so that all households in town would receive, um, you know, information on this. So we could decide what that information is, but we have, we have the ability to, you know, get paper mail in everybody's mailbox so they know procedure, process, timeline, and all, all those types of things. And then, of course, we have email lists and um, social media and all that. I don't see if you want to add anything else to that. Does it? Okay, cool. And my last question is, when it comes to answering the questions for the budget, it would be the past board, correct? The outgoing board, yes. It's, it's the outgoing board's uh, meeting still is my understanding. Okay. Yeah, and I think as we've as we've discussed it in the past, and as as you know, we discussed with the former board members that um, it would be we would do this as a joint um, meeting in which you know uh, how we had set up the Warren articles to be presented at the meeting in March would be how we present the meeting, how we present the Warren articles at this meeting. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so Matt had his uh, he had a virtual hand up earlier, and then we'll go to Rob. Sorry, I don't know how to. I don't know how to do this, Norm. I think that was three last questions, just so we're clear on that. Um, uh, uh, James, uh, great to see you. Saw the pups earlier when I ran by your house. Oh, great! For those of you who don't know, come by James's house sometime and see the the fox pups that are running around outside his house. It's pretty cute. Um, foxes are foxes living under the barn are much happier than the skunks that used to live there. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to, it could be late, too late in the day for me. Um, I, I don't know that I follow how all of the amendments to say the operating budget will go because I'd like to second Bill's concern. If we start with the way that I heard it, so I guess I'll, I'll loop back to Norm's first last question, um, which is kind of like process, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think whatever we do, instructions have to be clear as day because I'm, I'm super confused. Um, and I, I want to just make sure that I think I heard you say we will almost start with the deepest cuts first. Correct. And, and if that's the case, um, I would just like to say I, I worry a little bit about voter fatigue. Um, if if we start with the deepest, I, I just feel like at some point people might just throw their hands up. Um, and I wonder if starting with the proposed budget and then maybe working backwards the other way could could be a, a different strategy. And I'm curious um, if the group, maybe you, Steve, and Jim considered the other way as an option. Uh, frankly, I did not consider that as an option uh, because, I, again, I was going by, based on my experience at past meetings, um, and typically that's how they look, um, that the proposed budget is always the last one we vote on. Uh, the amendments always come first. Um, and I, I don't like the idea of taking away people's ability to, um, to set up amendments. Um, and I think that just the way I think it would typically work is that the votes will either be there for the amendment, any amendment or not. Um, whether it's, I, I don't see a lot of people switching from a big cut to a little cut typically. Uh, or from saying no to a big cut, but saying yes to a smaller cut. Um, that happens more often than, um, than some other ways around, but I think it would either be the biggest cut or no cut uh, would be where the votes would end up. 
is just my, that's a guess of mine. Um, I don't know if that should have any bearing on the order of, of the vote. Um, and I guess part of it too is that if we start with the proposed budget and it fails, well, hopefully one of the other ones would still pass. So it's, I think it's a safer one to have that be last as the safety net. Um, because again, we don't want to have to, like Norm said, we don't want to have to do this again should the rules come down. I'd rather not have to do this again if no budget passes. Um, and, but I will certainly consider the order and see what, work through some scenario, some predicted scenarios in my head and see what may work. Uh, but like I said, I'd really like to, to maintain the voters' ability to amend um, like we do in a, in, in a normal meeting where that happens first. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. And, and I think when, you know, when we met and, and sort of talked about a, the, a couple of things in our conversation sort of rose up of, of what I think we felt um, were important to include or at least to, to put forward in this in the meeting. One was, um, and I think James had said it, to try to keep this um, as close to as close to what would happen in the gym without being in the gym and not having it be able to be close to that. But how to how to provide information in a way that um, the public can can use it. Um, so process wise, like trying to keep keep some semblance of a process order. The second one was I think the ability in trying to set up multiple ways and times for the public to be able to provide comment. And so we could all hear how the public is feeling about both the process, because that would be important. And then also, um, you know, what people think about um, the amendments and then provide the opportunity for the board to respond. And so that feels like a ton to include in a short period of time, but it is important if, if James comes back after hearing you know, and receiving public comment that there was you know, $100,000 reduction, um, it's, it, the, the important piece is for the, for the board to be able to respond to that and, and talk about the impact of what that impact would be so that every, will be for what the impact of that cut will be because if we don't do that then you know we're, we're missing that um, we're missing the iterative process or at least the conversation that is so important to town meeting so somehow setting up the process so so the community can hear both the suggestion and then the impact before they go and vote um, and then the third piece is just setting it up so people get the flow chart which I think is going to be the challenge but um, um, anyway, so Rob, you're up next. Yeah, I'm still uh, I'm still trying to visualize what the the budget warrant would look like. So, you know, assume that people that are engaged have been a part of the process and asked their questions, and let's assume we've got two major amendments for different numbers. Um, so, are we saying that you you've got three options? You can vote for the budget as it stands and as uh, you know, suggested and, and approved by the budget committee, or you can vote for this option that says cut the budget by X, or you can vote for this option. So is that what we're looking at? Uh, no, it is not. Uh, because of the uh, requirement where five voters can request what it, it, it's a secret written yes, no ballot. Um, so it has to be sort of, it, it not quite like Jeopardy, but the phrasing is important. So it gets to be that yes, no question, which again, looks like what we do in a typical meeting where you tear off the yes and the no and put one in the box and pocket the other. Hopefully you get it the right way around. Um, so the first question would be sort of, are you in favor of amending the proposed operating budget to this and approving that new number? Just yes or no, on this on the on the amendment on the amended number that would be the first question the second question would be if again if that passes we're done uh so you could as a voter go through and say yes to each one of the questions that you'd be in favor of a 500 cut you'd be in favor of a 200 cut and if all else fails you know what you don't want to come back and try again so you're going to vote yes on the proposed budget um you may decide yes on the big cut and no on the other two because you want to all or nothing, go big or go home. And 
you're willing to come back and try again. Um, or you may decide no on all, th on all options uh, because your choice wasn't there. Um, and, and so the voters can vote whichever way they want, but a, a three yes vote I see as a very viable um, and rational way to go. Um, so there would be options on the paper ballot and you're gonna be voting yes or no on each of those options. Correct. You would you would think that somebody would vote. I mean, in my mind, you would vote yes on one of the three, but not on all three. Just yeah, and again, that's where my job gets difficult in explaining this, so that people understand that it's three separate questions, and that you only get to the later questions after the first one fails. Um, as soon as you get one that passes that article three is then solved, if you will. Right. Um, and, and so the challenge, as I'm experiencing tonight, with a lot of smart people on the phone, is trying to figure out a way to explain this um, so that it works. Because uh, if people don't get it, it won't work. Um, no matter how good of a system there is, if I don't do my job to explain it, we're gonna be in trouble. Well said. <laughs> Seth, your hand is up. Well, that leads to my question exactly, because I am always surprised. I mean, I am a lawyer, so I do tend to follow these things, but I am surprised at every time meeting when my friends say to me, now am I supposed to vote yes or no? And I'm always like, how did you not follow what we're doing? But they don't. So how, when is it that you explain this is how this works when these people are driving up in their cars? When does that happen? <laughs> Unfortunately, by the time they're driving up in their car, that's just like in a normal meeting. I've called the question at that point. It's late. To, it's too late at that point for me to hold their hand and explain. Yeah. Um, the meet, the earlier phone call or the earlier online forums. Um, that's where the, that's where I need to get the the point across. Um, and so, so we have to build attendance at those which are not the time of the vote to a significant number that this vote goes off successfully. That's the real challenge, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, building the public awareness piece, um, you know, both we can do mail, but I think coming up with a good communications plan um, in order to do the explanation, but also to try to drive people to come, you know, to either a, a webinar or being on a conference call or some somehow to hear not only the process piece, but to hear the comments and the discussion piece will be um, important. So how we time that and how we get those materials and messaging out, uh, I think to James's point, will either make or, 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 or have the meeting fail. Um, I think if we're not, if we don't get that outreach right, I think this could all like, look, be a bus. And I, I don't know if that's what happened to Bose or if they just really had technical problems, but I, I do think that's important. Uh, Liz and then Janet I'll come over to you. I saw your hand pop up. I just have a I just have a really quick follow-up question to that. Let's um, let's just say we do the information presentation sessions or session and we get all kinds of feedback that people are super confused. Like we just we're headed down a path where we just know that this is not gonna go well. Um, James, have you thought about any provisions for um, if we need to, you know, kick out the meeting by a day to allow for another night? I mean, you know, just if we, um, you know, I'm just a little concerned that by having it three days apart, if we don't get the message, if we don't make it clear and we don't accomplish what we're saying we want, need to accomplish, and that's to educate and to make sure everybody understands what's actually going to happen and happening and is going to occur on Saturday, kind of what our, you know, our plan would be um, to maybe dial back a little bit on it to make sure we get that understanding. That is a very good point. Um, I hadn't thought of that, but uh, um, certainly there uh, should be a, a, a plan B if we uh, are getting that feedback that it's not being communicated and it and if it's not going to work, then we 
should be able to pull the pull the plug on the plan and, and push it out a little bit. I'd still like to try to keep it within that um, May 15th um, date, uh, which will become much more difficult without a Saturday voting um, in there. But, um, but yes, I, I agree that we should be able to constantly evaluate the next step and whether or not we're gonna move forward or delay. Uh, Janet, you're up next. Um, I have a lot of concerns, unfortunately. Um, I think, uh, number one, I think this is going to be very cumbersome to explain to the older population in our town. Um, it's hard for older people to have change. Um, some people, it's hard to have change in their life, no matter what age they are. Um, if somebody receives that letter explaining how it's going to go, and they have questions, who do they ask? They're not going to, I don't think, um, that the questions could all go to one person. Um, I just don't know how that's going to happen. If we have five or 600 people voting, which I believe we, had ha we have had at many, many school meetings, um, how are we gonna handle the traffic for that? After you vote, where does your car just, do you take your car and just go home? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. That is the, that is the whole point of a drive-through ballot voting. And then how do you know if you supposed to come back because there won't there won't be any coming back that day. So, um, so sorry, I guess I guess I'm not clear on um, if you're doing item one and they have the chance to vote for that that item uh, that article, or they have chance to vote on a five hundred thousand um what do i want to say um delete or, or reduction re reduction that's the word i'm looking for or a three hundred thousand dollar reduction or a 100 how are they going to know which one passed when they're counted after one o'clock and if they have to come back and vote well, they would vote on each one, and that's the trick, is that at the time of voting, there will be no way to know which one passes. Correct. And, and that's, the, that's a problem, and that's why it's kind of that contingent voting, and you need to fill out each question. Once it closes, I count the votes, the announcement will give the vote totals for each one and say what passes there will be no coming back. And that's why we're doing it as a contingent is so that that way we don't have to drive back through. And it's just the only we reason we would come back to hold another meeting would be if the rules fail or the budget in all forms of amendment and, and as proposed also fails. That would be okay. when we would need to come back. Okay. But, and it, would, but it would not be that same day. It would, it would be a different day. Okay, and where would they find out what the vote was the next day or? I would work with Steve to get the, uh, to publicize the vote through normal, um, how the school normally communicates. Uh, so I'm sure we could do Facebook. I'm sure we could do an email list, voice or uh, phone calls. Um, I'm sure it would be picked up in the paper on Sunday as a worst case scenario for, for folks reading the news. Um, as, many, as many ways as possible, I'd be open to hearing, the more, the more ways to publicize it, the better. Okay. Um, my other, um, I disagree with Bill uh, in that people have had the chance to uh, speak to either the school board or the budget committee about how they feel. There are many, many people that 
you probably know and I know in town that wouldn't say anything at a public meeting if their life depended on it. They'd rather die right there. Um, so they have not voiced, I mean, I have heard a lot of people voice concern about the budget, but after the fact, after it was approved by the school and seven people on the budget committee. So, I, you know, we haven't heard from all those people. So I think it would be discourteous not to, um, you know, figure that somebody's going to do that. And certainly that's why we have the meetings. That's okay. why we don't just say school, school board, take your number. That's why we have the meeting to hear the voice of the, of the voters. I agree. So, um, I'm sorry, Jen, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's all right. I just, one thing I want to emphasize, I am very, very concerned with the older population because I know how it is for me. And I mean, I'm in this, this, these meetings and everything all the time, but when there's something new, I sort of panic and like the Zoom, I mean, that's just so foreign to me and at least I can do it because I do understand to a certain extent, but I get all nerved up and so forth. And a lot of these people, if they get upset because they don't understand it, they're not going to go and vote. I, I, appreciate, that. I, I appreciate that concern and, and certainly through this process, uh, education will be a huge piece of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I got a couple of hands and Jean's waving me down and then I'm going to ask James because it's come up a few times. Um, James, you, you mentioned today to me that you just on the traffic piece that you have um, at least spoken to Chief Pecora. I'm just, I'm just curious if you want to just say anything about that. I've, I've reached out to him, but I have not heard back. Okay. Um, that um, I can't my concern that. would be too many. Again, overwhelming at one site is, is a concern. Uh, which is why I'd like to spread it out over four hours and have uh, two lines. This was an idea that Gene came up with on our call the other day uh, to have two to split the alphabet, have two lines. Uh, we were toying with the idea of possibly two different locations, uh, say Maple Street and the high school. Um, my preference as moderator would be in one site so I can be there and not have to bounce back and forth uh, between two locations. Um, I think at the high school, it would work to have sort of half the alphabet come in off of Kearsarge, the other half off of Park Avenue and loop around behind the school, um, check in um, at two different lines and then kind of pull forward and merge as they put their paper in the ballot uh, or put their ballot in the box before driving home. Um, a big piece of that will be making sure uh, we put up the right cones and create the right uh, notification for that to work, um, including signs out by uh, the split, the Kearsarge split in front of the firehouse so that the folks with the different, li different last names go to the right place. Um, and again, that's part of the education and the uh, publicity uh, going forward. Um, I don't know if that's all, if that answers your question or if you add more to that or no, I think that's great. I just, oh, I just wanted to make sure that that got addressed. Uh, but again, as also as we move through this, uh, working with Jean um, and her team to make sure they feel comfortable and safe is paramount in my mind. Um, if we can't figure out a way to keep the supervisors uh, safe and comfortable, we need to come up with a new plan. So I'm going to actually. Um, I have Bill and then Rob. I was going to ask Gene, um, you, you sort of waved me down and you haven't spoken yet and you just got uh, named sort of like a presidential debate. If, if you get named <laughs> and you get to hop in. So Gene, um, <laughs> if you want to respond and, and then what's on your mind. Okay, I'm Gene Lightfoot. I'm one of the supervisors of the checklist. Um, and we have, I've been talking with James a lot about this. And um, one of the things that I was picturing was perhaps as they get their ballot, they would go like to the parking lot at the high school um, and sit there and mark, and mark the ballot. Perhaps the education, it could be, we could have people there 
stand, who, if people were having trouble, they could call on, you know, one of these people who would be wearing a vest or something to help explain to them about the ballot. I mean, assuming that we had people there who understood how the ballot went, <laughs> but um, that's uh, one suggestion I have. And then, um, I, I, James, I don't know if you want me to talk now about what we were talking about, or do we want to finish this first? What I told you this morning. Uh, since I can't remember what that was. Oh, okay, <laughs> it was about the safety. Okay. Um, yeah. You want to? If I'll just mention yeah, it. Go ahead. That um, the supervisors, we've been talking about it, and I mean, we understand the logistics, um, and there are big concerns um, about the whole the safety of everyone, not just us, in this whole situation, because it is the virus is still around even doing drive up, I mean, especially the people taking the ballots. I mean, you're gonna have that problem. You're gonna have problem with people not having pens so that we'll have to have pens. Those pens will have to be cleaned every time before they're given to someone. So there's that whole safety issue. Um, and already you know, one of the supervisors has said she just can't do it anyway because she has a real danger at home um, if it's run this way. And I don't, we don't have any other solution. So I'm just saying that and we can replace her. That's not a problem. But um, anyway, that's what I have to say. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and one more example of um, trying to come up with the best things, the best option, not a good, not necessarily the best, or I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> the best I'll, option that we can do, maybe yeah, not the- I'll, 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 I'll stop and go back to Jim and see <laughs> who's the question is next. <laughs> uh, Bill's hands up is next and then Rob. Uh, can you hear me? You sure can. Um, so I guess my, my question will be quick, but it's, um, I'm just thinking this through. What about voter for fraud? Um, you have, like, how does that, are you checking to make sure these people are from Hockington? There's <laughs> still, is somebody going to check and make sure? Uh, yeah, they're, and then, they're still and driving up and checking in with the yeah. supervisors. Say again? Yeah. Still, so, oh, sorry. Uh, they're still pulling up and checking in with the supervisors of the checklist. Uh, just like in a normal meeting, you come into the gym and you go see Jean at her table and check in. It's the same thing. You don't get that ballot until you check in. Okay. And, and Jean, do you want to, do you want to add a little bit more to that? Cause that would be your, you know, your purview and how you've thought yeah. about that. Yeah. I was just going to assure Bill that um, we would have, we would have the registration list with us. Um, and divide them, the A2K and L2Z, um, and they would be asked their name, and um, at a meeting, they don't have to show an ID, but, you know, generally they do, so, um, and we would check them off and give them the ballot right there, one ballot. We would not be doing, you know, asking them to print the ballot at home that I think I read about as a potential involved. That wouldn't happen, so with the I think we would control it that way. And if there are two people in the car, we'd need both their names, we'd check them off, and that would be it, just like we would at a regular meeting. Thanks, Gene. Um, Rob. Can you, Jim, can you hear me? I'd like to ask a question. Yeah, Rich, I'm going to get to Rob, and then we'll I'll come right to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, sure. So just to speak to uh, Janet's point about people understanding the ballot, I think the lead time for having some type of mock ballot out there uh, needs to be at least a couple of days and perhaps having somebody in the front side of that or you know if you have questions maybe there could be another lane where you could pull out and somebody could explain it to you so you're not clogging up the, the rest of the lines but I would say at least two days with some good anecdotal notes there that says okay if you're doing this this is what it means etc um, but thank you for Yep. all the work on this thanks no. um rich can you hear me now we sure can thank you um i was just wondering if it would be possible to delay the meeting until june or july at such time the governor has lifted the ban on assemblies but still uh as i understand it there will still be social distancing involved one way that i thought that we could have a a, a meeting where everybody is there is if we had a meeting out on the soccer field and we would put people in lawn chairs 10 feet apart and the school board would be, would uh, speak through microphones so that everyone could hear 
And then remote microphones could be set up in the field so that people could walk up and stand 10 feet apart and, and address the, the microphone in a normal way. I certainly appreciate that as an option. Um, with the May 15th uh, contract deadline for the teachers coming up, as well as the uncertainty if the um, uh, governor takes action between now and then. Uh, it's quite possible that, that we'll still be in the same boat at that point, and then we'll be f are, uh, looking at either doing this then or, or trying to come up with something else later or coming up against uh, teachers losing their health insurance um, on July 1. Um, so I, for one, would rather not really push this back any farther, uh, but I believe that would be uh, the call of the, um, technically, I think that would be the outgoing school board. Um, actually, at this point, it would be me because uh, we have had the meeting. It's been scheduled. It's my postponement or not. So um, I'll consider it. But uh, at this point, I think I'd like to try to really try to get something uh, moving for the ninth. But I, I appreciate the idea and the concept. Uh, we had thought about um, doing a similar outdoor over at the fairgrounds at one point. Uh, we thought about keeping, um, or it was, it was a very quick uh, think about, uh, but it was brought up to have every room in the high school used uh, with no more than 10 people in any room, which would satisfy the, the order. Um, but that one to me is just, would not be able to feel comfortable um, in a situation like that. Um, so that's why we're kind of, it, it's the best available option. It's not the best option. Um, ideally, I would have loved to have had a regular traditional meeting like we're all used to. Um, but in these difficult times, I hope the voters will understand and uh, work with us as much as, 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 as they see reasonable. But, Thank you. Yeah, and I just add just a little bit on the James's great answer. You know, one of the, the challenges I think we have um, is, you know, so we have a, our, our budget our new budget begins July 1st. And so um, we don't have any sort of statutory provisions that were, that enable us to sort of move forward without that budget. And then we have, um, I don't know, 100, 100 plus teachers um, who, who are, you know, who have jobs, who have families, who, who, are, who are dependent upon and their, you know, their, their jobs and livelihood are dependent on the town. So, so we have that added pressure. Um, and then, you know, if, if we do a process and, and, and wait until June, let's just say we, we skipped ahead to June and we're, we're still, we don't have crystal ball, so we're still operating under the same scenario we are today. And that budget, and, and we go through the scenario and the budget fails for whatever reason, um, you know, then we're, then we're really struggling in order to get a budget passed in time before, you know, we, we, we have no contracts, we have no teachers, and a new budget starts and we, we have no authority in which to expend any dollars. And so the longer I, I just I get nervous because the longer we go without resolution here, the district uh, can't plan. We we can't plan our our administrators and our teachers can't plan, and that re starts to reverberate across their families um, and decisions that they have to start making. And so, I, I just personally see May as sort of the time where, um, if if we can do this without risking um, you know health and safety. Um, waiting longer exposes the district, I think, to in, in the town to a lot more risk um, of sort of not having uh, the ability to operate, the ability to pay people, the ability to have contracts. Um, and that feels to me like a very scary and really worst case scenario. So I, I just hope we can find a way to move forward. And this might not be the optimal plan, um, but I, I do think with all of us um, working on it, we, we might hopefully can get to a place where we, we feel comfortable enough to move forward. Um, Norm. Just want to reiterate, reiterate one thing. James, I just strongly recommend figure out something with the rules of engagement if we can have that before. If there's anything in your power that we don't go through all this work and then it's shot down the day, the day of the, um, of the vote. And I would just try to think outside the box if possible if we could. Understood. Mr. Chapin. 
Uh, sorry to keep chiming in on this, but I just, I just want to be clear. Um, again, going through the whole process, the paper ballot um, comes through. If we have more than majority that approve a budget cut of, let's just use half a million bucks, that passes. Is that correct? If it's more than 50 percent, yes. So it's just more, like than, more than more than 50 percent, and that's the first time through. You're going to go with the deepest cut the first time through. Just just to be clear on this, and and it's because generally that's how things have gone in the past, and generally, you know, when we have meetings like this, that's generally how things have gone in the past. Is that correct? I just right. just it, want to make sure. Yeah, typically at, at a regular meeting, there'd be that most somebody would come up, motion to amend. We discuss the motion, and if that passed and it was approved, I would probably call the question um, to to vote on on the on the article as amended. That the amendment has been made at the meeting. Uh, the only place to amend it is at the meeting. Um, so to start with the, I think we'll get to the same place either way. Um, but I think it's more fair to the voters to start with the amendments uh, because that's the way we do it at the regular meetings. Okay, I just, yep. again, I, I just want to be, I just want to be clear on it. I, I um, understood. And the, and the other point um, I, I like, can everyone still hear me? I can see I'm muted. You hear me? Good. Yeah. Um, I, I, I commend Rich uh, and there, and to, to be clear, uh, a, a situation like Rich's where we have a meeting in an open space cannot be had until June. Is that, that to be clear, that, that could not happen on May 8th, right? Is that right? I, I would not feel safe having a meeting even with 10 people on 10 or uh, people 10 feet, 20 feet away from each other uh, with the schools closed through the rest of the year. I do not feel comfortable with that scenario at this point. Okay. And then, in light, sorry, I'm, 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 I got one more question. Uh, you know, in, in light of what, uh, of what Janet has said um, with regards to the confusion of a meeting or what have you, would there be any consideration at all um, to default to the budget committee's budget if we can't get a meeting in on May 8th? No. Statutorily, yeah. that is not allowed. Got it. Thank sorry. you. Sorry. Yeah, there is, you know, under under state statute, there is no default budget. Um, we have to, we have to, have the voters have to pass a budget. Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> it's a good question. If we could, if we could, we'd already be there. <laughs> and I have one other concern. Go for it. Um, I, if you have cars coming in from Kearsage and you have cars coming in from the other end and each one having half the alphabet, okay? It stands to reason that you could have people backed up on Park Avenue, both directions for as far as you can imagine and then some and also on Kearsage. Years and years and years ago, before they allowed or, or suggested to people to come down uh, exit seven and get off the highway for the town fair, we used to have people backed up in cars waiting as they got off uh, 89 that far up Maple Street. Now, I know this is probably sounds like an exaggeration to you, but if people get out of their house and come and they can see cars in both directions, are these people gonna give up voting, even though they know it's nine to one and they don't have to be there right at nine o'clock? I'm really concerned about that and, and whether we will lose voters for either, you know, either side. I mean, it doesn't make any difference. I just want to have everybody have 
you know, a fair shot at, at voting. Again, I agree. I 100% agree with you. And if I had a better idea in my head, or if anybody else has a better idea, I'm all ears. I just haven't been able to think of a better way to, to come up with that, to solve that issue. Is there any possible way of having it at the fairgrounds where they could be, you know, off the highways? What I'm thinking is you could plug up Kearsage and Park Avenue in both directions for yeah. something like this if you're going in one side for part of the alphabet and in the other side for the other part. And I'm sure, I mean, we've got a police chief that's awesome, so. No, and, and I've reached out to him. I, like I said, I've not heard back from Chief Pecora yet, um, but I'm sure, he, and that was an issue that I raised with him is, is the traffic and wanted to get his uh, input and blessing and help in, uh, in dealing with that concern. But I, appreciate, I greatly appreciate you bringing it up uh, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. Chamberlain to, his hand was raised. Just that there's, uh, what they're doing in, in uh, the town I live is they're actually suggesting uh, hour spans of when people can vote as well. So A through C is during this hour. And you know, they're, so they're trying to spread out to the voting, just advisement, you know, that if you can to spread out the voting within the, within the four hours. So not just entrance, but, um, you grouping as well by hour. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Thanks. Thanks, we'll, Steve. Uh, we'll 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 talk with the supervisors about that and see if uh, if we can do something with that to spread it out a, a little bit. Rob, that, that's exactly what I was just going to suggest. Just smaller groupings, and you know, keep your two lines. But if A through D could come from nine to ten, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, nope. Jean's giving a thumbs up, so it looks like she likes that idea. I like it. <laughs> uh, that would be no problem for us. And of course, um, if, if we recommend like A to D from 9 to 11, if they come at, at noon, I'm not turning them away. No, no. Whenever, whenever they get there, they get there. It would just be an, an, a soft ask. Yes. Turn nobody away. Wow, we've exhausted everybody's virtual hands. Um, yeah. I'm impressed. Uh, so I just want to say a couple things, and then um, if, if there's no other, I don't want to cut off conversation. So if anybody has additional questions or comments, uh, they should feel free to raise their hand uh, to do so. But so tonight, what we wanted to do, obviously, is for James to come and sort of share the, the current thinking. Um, as as James mentioned, you know, our next opportunity when we have a scheduled school board meeting is next Thursday, April 30th. And so um, after hearing all this, I'm sure James is going to go back. Um, actually, he's not going to go back anywhere. He's, he's already at home. So James is going to go <laughs> maybe back to the drawing board um, Man, and, and, computer besides. and draft up, um, I think, you know, the, as he discussed the rules, uh, we heard a lot about, you know, what sample ballots would look like. Um, uh, a bit more on process, and then he would bring that to the meeting on the 30th, hopefully get it out a couple of days earlier. Um, and then I, I think, you know, Andrea and I can work with Steve around, um, you know, planning around dissemination and communication, um, especially taking into consideration, I think Janet's good comments about how we reach and, and uh, talk to, um, Older, older citizens um, about how, how this is gonna work. And I think somehow we have to come up with a simplistic way for people to understand um, this concept. Um, but anyway, I bring this all back together on the 30th. And I think at that point, you know, that would be, I think tonight was more of like a sounding board. Mm -hmm. What would be presented on the 30th would be a plan. Yes. Um, and I think that plan would be something that um, our, our, our current board and former board members would um, maybe not formally approved, but because it's James's meeting. But I think we would provide him it's with our meeting. It's the town's meeting. <laughs> it's a town's meeting, uh, but James is going to make a decision on, on how we move forward with that meeting. And so I think uh, you know we would provide additional comments um, to James, but uh, soon thereafter, 
if we were going to implement that, we would have to have a go, no go decision, I think around that 30th date in order to get the communications out, get people comfortable with it. Um, and, and make sure we're, we're all in, we're all understanding in as much agreement as we can be on the process and, and that we're moving forward. Um, and then a uh, gene, I just, for you and the supervisors, just to be sure that you're comfortable, you have the people you need um, and, and any sort of concerns that you have in terms of, you know, implementing um, the voting that those are, you know, you, you feel comfortable doing that too, would be really important. So to come back on the 30th, with, with, so your go ahead would be really important. Uh, um, I can come back, I can come back on the 30th, um, but the other two do have, they, they have serious concerns about the whole, you know, the drive up and not only their own safety, but everyone's safety. So that's just a huge, huge concern from our standpoint. So I just want to put that out there. Just Candy just told me she could just got kicked off in the participant. So she's, I told her, try to get back on because you need to comment again on the, um, you know, in the public comments. So that's, I'm just put that out there for you. And on that, James, have you, uh, and I know you've had a lot of conversations, have you had any, have you reached out to anybody at um, the Department of Health and Human Services uh, just to, uh, you know, get their input on some of what Jean's bringing up around safety issues? I have not. That's a great idea. I will tomorrow. I think that would be good. Um, just to ensure that whatever it is we're doing, you know, we get their advice um, and best practices. Yeah, I, I would say that it, it's the public health issue is the issue. I mean, that's yeah. the main problem, not, you know, the traffic and everything. We can deal with that. I, you know, I've, I've, you know, we park cars at the fair all the time. So, you know, that, and no one gets killed up there. But I think, you know, that public health is the biggest issue from our standpoint. All right, um, is there, I'm going to just put the agenda back up so um, we, we can all see where we're at. I think that's the agenda, let's see what happens. You guys seeing the agenda? Yes. All right, magic of technology. Um, so if there's, if, are there any other sort of last minute, um, last minute comments, suggestions? If not, then we're gonna open up the second uh, public comment um, and I know we, we still have a number of, of people on the line and some hands raised. So I think people want to provide some additional input um, onto our process. All right, uh, so not seeing any more, I'm going to um, going to flip over and going to start with Tammy, um, who I should, Tammy, I believe you can unmute yourself. Yes. Tammy. How are you? I'm good. So Tammy Clay, 62 Buckingham Lane. I thought um, um, that if the school budget wasn't approved or couldn't be approved, that it would revert back to the previous budgets until um, further um, vote could be taken. Am I, do I not understand that right? Um, so I, I'm going to look to Steve and James just to clarify uh, my answer. But um, my understanding is that uh, we we proceed until we have a budget. That there's no default budget. So if if, if the budget gets uh, turned down um, or voted down by by the voters, then we don't have a budget, and we have to keep moving forward until we get an approved budget. Um, there okay. there's there's no, there's no fallback. Well, and I'm awesome. seeing nodding. And I, Steve I, uh, and um, I, someone sent an executive order bit issue about the ability to expend up to last year's. Um, it was quite, it was confusing language, but Jim, I can follow up for the next meeting if there is the ability to expend up to last year's if you don't have a budget. There is, there is a resource that was sent and I can follow up with our attorney by the next meeting. Okay. James, I saw you take yourself off mute there quickly. I don't know if you had something to add. No, I was thinking about it, but then um, it, it's all good. All right, uh, so next up is Scott. Scott Zipke. Scott, how are you doing? Maybe I didn't do that right. Scott, can you take yourself off mute? There we go. Oh, almost. There you go, Scott. You should, we should be able to hear you. All right, we're good? We're good. All right, thanks. Uh, I actually have 
two questions. Uh, James, I think the first one is, uh, so you can only vote in this meeting if you're in a car. What if somebody isn't in a car? Um, quite frankly, I had not thought of anybody jogging or cycling up. Um, but the, uh, my, just, I hadn't thought of it. Um, well, there, I mean, for one, I think that there might be people who aren't, can't be in cars, don't have a car, but also two, it might be a way to reduce traffic. I mean, I could see myself biking to the meeting if it would help reduce traffic. You know what I mean? Uh, certainly if, uh, they're otherwise socially distancing appropriately. Um, I don't foresee a problem with that. Um, it may be more dangerous with that many cars coming through to not be in a car, uh, just because of how other drivers are, are behaving, I guess, at that point. So that could be a concern, but um, I certainly, if somebody walks up, I don't foresee myself saying, no, you're not allowed to vote. Um, if they're in the checklist and a registered voter, we'll figure it out. All right. And then my second question was to kind of get back to what um, Bill Chapin was talking about earlier. If I understand this correct, and the way I, am, I listen to this meeting is that if a $500,000 cut is higher up the piece of paper and it gets 52% of the vote, then it passes even if a, the, the, vote, the school budget and budget committee operating budget gets 90% of the vote. Correct. And those numbers would all be public. So we would know that, that the operating budget failed with 90% of the vote. Uh, that would that part actually would not be um, I don't foresee that part coming out because as soon as that first amendment passes we have the 50% plus one that that's the vote that counts we're not going to be counting votes that aren't that don't happen because essentially those other votes would not happen okay thank you And again, this is just sort of proposal stage at this point. Um, things may change. We may come up with some better ideas. Um, I'm open to them certainly at this point. That's why we're, that's why we're having this uh, sounding board, I guess. Is Jim frozen as he's uh, Muting or unmuting? I'm sorry, Candy Garvin. I, I I was frozen and I was talking to myself at the same time. So Candy, I'm sorry. You should be able to unmute yourself. I I unmuted myself. How's that? You're perfect. We can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. I love that. Now, first of all, what I want to tell you, on the both the budget committee, my dogs want to talk to you too. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So thank you for all the work you've done. I am not one of those people who can come to your meetings. I have something else on Monday night, but I follow it up, uh, follow up on things. I support the schools and I know that this meeting and what we're trying to do is continue school and then town business. So thank you for doing that. And here comes the big butt. Are you ready for that? We're ready. The big butt says, Um, we're not getting a lot of feedback from people who could be guiding us better. That's not our fault. It is our problem. I still think safety is going to be an issue, whether somebody doesn't have a car and they walk up or whether they are in a car and now the supervisors have to go into the car. If you haven't seen us supervisors, Ginny is the youngest one and she's going to retire this year. Uh, Jean and I are above the age, and it's not that we aren't healthy people. It's just we're at the, the upper of the risk population. So that being said, I'm hoping that you think about what the safety of everybody who's going to vote is going to be, because I hear what the budget's going about, uh, uh, the worries about the budget not being passed by a certain date. I know it and I appreciate that, but I think these are really strange times. These are things that we have not ever come 
across before, and hopefully we never will again. The other part of it is the budget may have some problems because there are a lot of people out of work. So that isn't why this meeting is going on, but it might be something for you to understand. I do appreciate everything you've done. I really do. As a supervisor of the checklist, no offense, I don't want to get this stuff. I want to see my grandchildren grow and see them get married. Right, Norm? Anyway, thank you for entertaining us tonight and just for being here. I, I like this. It, it's really a, a good way to communicate. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Candy. Um, I think it's the first time we've been called entertaining, which um, <laughs> <laughs> which, which, is a, which is a good line for us. Um, are there, that was the last hand I had up. Um, Jim, I've, I've got a question for Gene on Candy's comment. If oh, that's please. Appropriate. I think so, um, yeah, go for it. I'm just curious, and, and it's certainly understandable that people would have concerns being on that supervisory role. Is it possible to entertain people who would be willing to be volunteers supervised by the supervisors of the checklist who might be able to be more distant. Do you understand I, what I'm asking? Yeah, I'll, uh, this is Jean. I'll answer that. Yes, it is possible we can deputize people so that, yeah. In fact, we do have one person who helps us on, uh, we always have four of us working at the school meetings and uh, town meetings. So yes, yeah, we're looking actually, if we proceed with this, we're looking for two pairs of young legs, <laughs> if you know what I mean, to run up to the cars and get the names and come back to the table where the books will be set up. Uh, if it's not inappropriate for a school board member to play that role, I would offer services. Great, thank you, Rob. Thanks, um, so we did get another hand, and so it's uh, Diane L. So Diane, I'm going to bring you over to, um, allow you to talk. Just give me one second as I press the magic buttons. Um, all right, Diane, you should be able to take yourself off mute if you could just uh, let us know your name. Nope. I think you just put yourself on mute. Can you hear me? We sure can. I guess I have to hold the space key down. My name is Diane Lachance at 264 Amesbury Road. Um, I think the plan sounds great. I was uh, pleasantly surprised with um, all the ideas you came up with. I did want to comment, um, I'm not sure I completely understand the May 15th deadline. Um, to me, it sounds more of a, I, I, I say convenience loosely, I, I say it in context to the virus, and I just wanted to remind you that there's a lot of people who have lost their jobs, who have a lot of stress, the teachers do as well. And I think if you were to wait a few weeks, those few weeks would be a great time to educate people on how you're gonna do this drive-through voting and how the amendments will work. It feels a little rushed to be done by May 9th to educate people. So I'm just asking you to reconsider um, the importance that you're putting on the May 15th date. I'd love to hear um, maybe a better understanding of what that date means so that um, maybe I can sympathize a little bit more with you. But um, right now, um, I'm thinking near the end of May or beginning of June would be uh, a better time. Thanks. Thanks, Diane. Um, and maybe, uh, Steve, can I ask you to, um, you, you sort of kicked off this conversation with that. I'm wondering if you, if you don't mind sort of going back through the dates and the statutory um, guidelines or, or statutory statutes, maybe that's right, but statutory timelines that we have, if you don't mind. Sure. There's a really, there's the first one we've been talking about is the teachers. So uh, teacher contracts have to be issued by May 15th. If we, if we don't have a budget, um, the board has, has choices. They either determine what a level is they're comfortable believing that they will have after a meeting and issuing contracts up to that amount, uh, or not issuing any contracts because they're just not willing to gamble on, on how much to issue for the teacher's contract. So, so either contracts or notices of non-return have to be issued to teachers by May 15th. Um, that's statutory requirement. The other piece is if we keep moving forward, our support, so that's about 100 staff. 
Um, that doesn't mean the board will not give notices of non-return to all 100, but that's a possibility. The other piece is, the other uh, governed by statute is our Hopkins Educational Support staff, and they're required to be given contracts by the last day of school. Um, and so right now, that's June 8th, June 9th, and either we give contracts or we give notices of non-return. Um, and so th those are our choices for the, for the board to uh, adopt a slate and either give notices of non-return or contracts by May 15th for our teachers and the last day of school for our support staff. If, um, those, if notices of non-return are issued in June and there isn't a, isn't a contract issued, um, then they are not employed as of July 1. After July 1, anybody who doesn't have a contract will not have health insurance in the district. Um, does that make, I don't know if that's clear, um, but so those are the two statutory requirements, May 15th, second Friday in May, and the last day of school. That's great, thank you, Steve. Um, that answered the question perfectly. Uh, so next uh, up at the hand is um, Ken Trom. So Ken, I just, uh, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? No. Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes, yep, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I, I appreciate all of the, uh, the, the comments that have, uh, and what James is proposing here. And as you know, town meeting is scheduled the week after school meeting at this point in time. So certainly listening with great interest. Oh, um, one of the issues was with the amendments to the warrant articles. And I had listened to the discussion in Bo and my impression was that the Bo School Board would vote to potentially amend the warrant, which sounds to be something very different than what James is proposing here. Now, because the world has changed since the Budget Committee and the School Board voted on the, the budget that's being presented, will the School Board at least be able to vote that, okay, now they support a $200,000 reduction or they still continue to support the original so that that kind of information would be provided to the voters? Thanks, Ken. And um, I, I'll, I'll start to answer. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, the school board, the, the, the current school board is probably the right way to say it, you know, we haven't had a discussion about amendments to the budget and to the warrant. Um, you know, the, the budget committee and the former school board, um, I call it that because it's, it's easier to switch between the former and the current school board. But the, the former school board and the budget committee have um, both approved um, a, a warrant and that warrant has been put forward. Um, and, you know, as James sort of said, that that's the, be we put the warrant out and that's the beginning of the meeting. Um, and so the, our plan and procedure has been to move forward with the warrant as it was put into the, the town report and has been um, put in front of the voters um, to start. And there hasn't been a conversation from this board to, to stray from that, um, but, but to bring the meeting forward. Um, and to my best of my knowledge, and, and Janet can answer this, I don't believe the budget committee has met to have any conversation about changes to the to the budget that they've approved um, to put in front of voters. I mean, they didn't approve the budget, they approved the budget to bring forward to the voters. Um, and so as we talked with James about process, um, we felt that the, the small group that met to discuss this felt that the school board, um, the, either the former school board or the current school board, it, it, it's not really at, at the point when we move forward with the meeting, it's not really our meeting at that point, it's, it's James and the voters meeting um, to have the discussion about about the school budget that's been proposed by the budget committee and the school board, um, and then you know it's up to the voters to rec to bring amendments forward and to move to move those amendments. Um, so this this is a roundabout way of answering your question, Ken. But I think at this point, you know, we we have the budget that's been voted on and approved by a, a former board, um, and then the the, the um, budget committee. And I, th I think in terms of process, it, it makes the most sense to put that in front of the voters um, in order to then make amendments as we would at a, 
as we would have in March. And the world has changed. And so um, my assumption is there's going to be a lot of public comments and a lot of conversation about about the budget um, and what to do. And I think the, the, the school boards um, will have the opportunity to answer questions and talk about impact of changes and what that means and be prepared to do that. But I, I think to not present that budget um, to the voters in order for them to make changes and, and to ultimately vote on it, um, that that it feels like the right thing to do is to move to move forward with, with what we've been proposing for the last, you know, since February. One other potential problem might arise. Um, I don't know how this would all play out if it if it um, push comes to shove, but with the postponement, that does not affect the legal date of the meeting back in March. So I think if there are any votes taken now, you might sort of run afoul of whether or not that March date is still the effective date for the require the statutory requirement that the meeting be held in March, for example. Uh, you could run afoul of that um, if decisions are made to change um, what the article is to that extent. Um, thank you, Ken. Um, so next up, um, the hand was for uh, Jeremiah Johnson. And so, uh, Jeremiah, you should be able to unmute yourself um, with your comment or question. Hi, can you hear me? It's actually Laura Johnson. <laughs> oh, hey, Laura, how are you? Hey, good, thanks. Hey, I just have two quick questions. Um, one, and I, I apologize if I missed this, but online voting, if that was possible at all, and um, if people can't do, you know, don't have access to do it via car, and then the other question was, um, I'm kind of confused about how you would keep six feet coming up to the car just for the safety of everyone. Thanks, I'm gonna ask James if- um... first, uh, first part with the online voting, if I knew of a system that was secure, um, I'd consider it. I don't know how you would check in with the register with the registry to make sure that you have, um, that you're a valid voter. Um, I think to try to come up with a system um, that I feel rushed with what we're doing, something like that would be even more rushed and more uncertain. Um, and I would, for one, would not feel comfortable straying that far afield. The other issue with that is that I don't think that would satisfy the secret written ballot yes, no, um, that is um, any five voters can request. Um, so I think that would create um, legal problems to try to come up with a system like that. Uh, the second issue being uh, distancing from the car as you come up. Um, I would envision having quite a separation between where the car stops and the table and uh, some loud voices. Um, if other people have other ideas, that's just kind of how I envisioned it in my head. I didn't really admittedly think that deep into the details of that at this point. <clears throat> I, I can speak some to that the, as the supervisors. Um, what we were thinking was someone would, we would all have masks on at the very least, and the person oh, um, going would go up to someone's car, um, and the person in the car would have to just crack the window. Um, I, I think for safety's sake, that's the way we have to do it and give the names. Um, in, in a meeting, in the town meeting or the school meeting, there is no requirement that you actually show your ID. So there's no, no one has to be touching anyone else's property. Um, and then the ballot would be handed in if they're to the cars or the ballots to the people in the car. So um, I, I think that's the other thing. The other thing is that there, there is no provision in the state of New Hampshire for online voting. You know, that would re require the legislature to take some action and the governor to sign it. So I don't think there's any way that we could do online voting. Thanks, and, and thanks for the, the comment, Laura. Um, I, I don't see any other hands coming up, um, but I wanna give anybody the opportunity for public comment. Oh, I'm sorry, I did see a hand come up and it was Billy's. And he's giving me the, I don't want to speak. <laughs> oh, he does want to speak. Um, Billy, we can hear you now. Yeah, good. Um, a couple of comments ago about the deadline. And I, I share the 
sentiment that it's like, you know, it's, it's tough, but you have to think it, it's for the teachers here that we're, we're talking about. This is why the deadline is because contracts need to be issued and we're not going to move back September 1st or whenever we start. So the teachers, if they don't have a contract, they need to have time to look for another job. I think the whole idea of the deadline to have this meeting is in the eyes of it's to assist the teachers to give them some sense of time to look for another job. Does that, does that make sense? I, I know Steve said it, but that's really what it, what it is. That's why there is a deadline for this meeting. So I, it was a couple of people before and I just thought I'd say it. No, I think it's, it's, it's good to reiterate that. Cause it is, I mean, we, 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 we have a lot of, we have a lot of people and a lot of families that um, are looking for, for assurance and then for the school board, you know, how, how you plan for next school year and how you put all those pieces in place. Um, right, right. There, there's a lot riding on, on, a, on, a, on a school budget. Um, and so it's, it's, not, it's not nearly just a technical piece, but it is the teachers, it's the administrative staff, it's ensuring that we, we can move forward with planning and hiring um, for next school year to ensure that our students are gonna receive the education we all want them to. So. Um, Billy, thank you for bringing that up. I think it's really important. Um, so I, before I move on to another uh, board member, I just want to make sure there's nobody else for public comment. And so I just want to do one more call out. And not seeing any then, um, I'm just going to move now to, uh, I guess, last comments, Norm. Uh, yeah, just a real quick question. Uh, James, the only school district to have come up with anything really has just been Bo, correct? You haven't heard any other feedback from any other school district that's working through this too? I have not heard anything yet. Um, I've been in close contact with council at the New Hampshire School Board Association, um, who is certainly aware of the issue. Um, I believe there are uh, seven other districts um, in the same boat um, as we're all working through, but I have not heard anything from the other districts as to what they're planning. Okay. So any so if something trickles in like next week, maybe a different idea. You're open. You're open to listening to that and maybe changing what you're proposing. Correct. Nothing set in stone. Certainly not at this point. Um, if okay. if the uh, uh, best answer that comes up out of the blue comes in on May eighth, that we can still make it work, and there's a better option that meets timing, safety. Um, legality, then I'm all for it. Um, okay. It's an ongoing decision um, to keep moving forward based on uh, safety and legality and getting it done. Um, that we can sort of pull the plug and delay at any point should the factors and the situations um, warrant. Okay. Thank you. All right, so at this time, um, I, I sort of just want to go back over our, our, our I guess, near-term process um, for where we're at. So, um, you know, James, our, our next meeting, um, it's, not on the, it's not on your screen. Um, it, it is actually April 30th will be our next meeting. So next Thursday at 5.30 um, will be when the school board meets again. Um, and so what I would ask um, all of you that are um, here with us today who are, um, interested and in, in want to be and should be part of that discussion. Um, I would like to invite you all back to, to join us um, sort of in a similar process and similar manner. Um, James will, will present more of the formal plan. Um, hopefully we'll get something out a couple days ahead of time to everybody in this group um, that we'll talk about and move forward with and then, and then see if there's um, still questions and, and then James will have to make a decision of whether or not um, you know, we proceed with the communications to try to get um, the meeting um, run smoothly for May 9th. So really our, our next date to meet is April 30th. There's no real decision tonight, but this has been a really helpful conversation um, uh, and productive conversation uh, to sort of help drive towards um, what I hope to be is a decision on the 30th, whether or not we're gonna proceed or whether or not there's too many concerns um, and we need to go back to the drawing board. Um, and I would just say uh, that if there are questions or if there's additional comments or concerns, and that goes for, I think, anybody on this call um, or any members of the public, that you know, all, this, all our board members, um, our, our ways to contact us are on the website. 
So please uh, feel free to send us um, emails, give a call, let us know um, your thoughts, concerns, ideas, suggestions. Um, I think we're all ears um, and we can pass those along to James as well as he sort of plans um, for what comes next. Um, and then I just wanna thank uh, you know, the, the, cur <laughs> the current board. Um, you know, we've had a lot of long meetings um, you know, in the run up to this and I, and I think we're gonna have um, some more long meetings moving forward, but um, thank you for, for digging in on this. Um, I wanna thank the former board members um, who are with us, um, not only for your commitment um, to the town and to the district, Um, still fully engaged in this process um, to help us sort of move move all the work that you've been part of along. So um, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's very much appreciated. Um, we want to thank the members of the budget committee. Uh, Jan and I know Rich was on earlier um, for your work and um, bringing us to this point and staying engaged. And of course to Jean um, for for her role in the supervisors and James um, for everything that you're doing and in, in trying to move this along. And finally, uh, this, this Steve Chamberlain um, for you know being there at all hours of the day, for answering my calls, to answering James's calls, to helping us think through and noodle this, to knowing the statutes and um, keeping the, your team going and engaged. Um, it's uh, it it is pretty amazing. You um, are one of the hardest working people I know, and these are really challenging, tough times. Um, but you know, thank you for your leadership um, in, in moving us in all this forward. Um, it's very much appreciated. Um, so with that, I, um, I, I don't think we need a formal motion to adjourn. And so I can just actually click the button and you all go away. And so I can just adjourn you. Um, and so thank you all. Um, I really appreciate your time. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you again virtually very soon. Um, Be safe, everybody. Bye.